Guess who came in the other day? It's Daisy, the old lady. She says, I come in a lot because I got to get my hair cut and I got to get the little hairs out of my mouth because I don't have no teeth, remember? Everybody loved Daisy so much, I thought next time she comes in, I'm going to make a YouTube video of her with the whole groom. So welcome, and I hope you enjoy this 20 or so minutes of the cutest, toothless, little schmooky schmooky in the whole world. Well, I don't know what a schmooky schmooky is, but I hope you enjoy watching her get her bath and her nails and all the fun things that come with grooming. Here I'm just prepping her shampoo. I start prepping the tearless shampoo first so I can wash her face. And then I, I'm gonna use a silky shampoo on her just to make her nice and soft. And uh, I prep that bottle as well. I always, always, always test the water temperature. Even if I was the last one to use the bath, I don't know if an elbow bumped the hot water thing. So just to make sure that the water doesn't get too hot. And I'm using the water very gently on her face just to get it wet. I'll get a better angle here. Look at her tongue. She says, I'm going to kiss you. I just kiss you the entire time I'm here. I got to try to keep my tongue in my mouth. She likes to lick my wrist while I am washing her. She's so stinking cute. Look at her. Lick, lick, lick. <laughs> I get her coat completely wet before I put the shampoo on her. I like to get her face wet first so I can start softening up any eye boogers that might be there. She comes in quite a bit so she doesn't get very many eye boogies but um, I like to do it anyway just in case. This green bottle is our tearless formula. It's well and good deep cleaning shampoo or deep cleansing shampoo and I try not to get any in her eyes even though it is tearless but I don't I don't want shampoo in my eyes. I don't care. I don't know. I just, I just try not to get it in their eyes. Here I'm picking off her eye boogies. One thing I wanted to point out is notice the lead around her is not really on her. It's just kind of on for show. A lot of people think, oh, I need to restrain my dog for washing. And, you know, most dogs, if you just kind of come at them like slowly and you don't have the water running and it's not like super loud, they're pretty pretty good at just staying where they need to be like if she was trying to jump out I would probably tighten the lead around her a little bit but she just stands there and I just kind of let her move around as she feels comfortable another thing people say is like oh my gosh my dog is so afraid of the water all this stuff well if you like blast the hose at your dog like if you're just spraying her from far away yeah your dog's going to be terrified of it but if you put it on low and make sure that it's warm and turn it on close to your dog's body so that it's not like something coming at them, then they're more likely to be a little more chill when it comes to being wet, wetened, wetened. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so I don't know if you noticed, but I took the other bottle of shampoo and here I'm, I'm like, what is going on? I found something on the tip of her tail. It looked like a scab. So I'm looking at it to see exactly what it is. Sometimes she gets like sap and stuff stuck on her, but I this was looks like she had maybe had an injury at the tip of her tail. So I'm looking at it again to see like what is going on. Can I can I pick that off? And I ended up leaving it because it looked like it was a scab. So I didn't want to cause any further injury. I told mom about it, and she's gonna have the vet take a look at it and see what's going on there. But sometimes dogs will whack their tail on something and can cause an injury on the tail. That's why a lot of dogs will get their tails docked when they're puppies, especially because they're prone to breaking their tails or injuring their tails. So yeah, I'm gonna leave that alone. I rinse it really well just to see if I can soften whatever it is up because if it'll come off easy and it's not attached to her skin, then I'll take it off, but I left it. So I'm rinsing her face. And she has to lick, 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 lick my arm again. She loves to kiss. And I got water on here. So let's do a different angle. Oh, <laughs> she's done. Time to blow dry. Sometimes dogs like to get a little crazy after their bath. This is one thing that I miss about working private because I could kind of have the lead off. But look at her. She's like, dogs love to rub against a towel or rub their faces on stuff. Like, she's, And so I just try to let them do it. But... Where I work, I need to always have them restrained just uh, because of our safety policies, which is fine. Um, but sometimes, 
like she got away with it. She's like, oh, I, I don't know. My butt's showing on the camera and everybody's looking at my butt. So I'm using a velocity dryer with a flat cone handle just to blow the water off of her. I get her mostly dry. I don't really dry her face very much because it's so sensitive and she says, I don't have any teeth. So why don't, don't I just don't blow dry my face because it's, it's not nice. I just like to get most of her hair. I'm looking at her tail again. I like to get most of her hair uh, straight so that she comes out, her haircut comes out nice and smooth like velvet. Ooh, shike. Sometimes it's just, I just have to get a good shike out. I help you get the water out and I don't have to get blow dried as much because I don't really like the blow dryer. I like to hit it away with my paw and just say, stop doing that. So, oh, you just said you weren't going to do my face. You said you weren't going to do my face and then you blew it, you know, you blew it on my face. Oof. Okay, let's go. After she's dry, I like to shave the little hairs off the front of her lips. Um, I like to use the clippers to do this, even though she hates it. Like, I really have to really have to sneak around and try to get her to let me do it. But using the scissors right there is super scary because, because she doesn't have teeth. Her tongue flops out, and using the clippers is a safer way to do it, even though she just, she always moves. She's just like, just let me do it, Daisy. Just let me do it. But look at her tail. She's just like, well, I'm just going to move around. I'm just, oh, I forgot my voice. I'm just going to move around. She can't get it, but I'm still going to be cute with my tail. I'm going to wag my tail and be, be cute. Nope, can't do it. Nope, can't do it. Oop, oh, I'm going to get out. I'm going to escape, and you're not going to be able to do it because I don't like it. I don't like the loud clippers on my face, so just just quit it. So I kind of go after that section in intervals, like I'll sneak up on her again later to try and get something, or if she's keeping her tongue in her mouth for a while, I'll pull a hair out and use my scissors there. But now I'm just uh, shaving the pads of her feet, and I like to get the little hairs out. Sometimes those hairs can get matted if they don't get shaved regularly, so it's really important to shave them out when you're when you bring your dog to the groomer. Then we have a little love break before I start shaving her. Really, I'm just kind of looking, well, I'm loving on her, but I'm also trying to remember myself of where her moles are. Um, she really liked being having her ears scratched right here. She's really leaning into it. She says, oh, that feels really good. Oh no, you got to brush out. Why you gotta get the brush? I thought I thought we were having a moment and you get the stupid brush. I don't like being brushed. I'm just kind of fluffing up any areas that were left a little bit curly and that way it'll be a nice smooth cut when I do her shave. Normally we do a two guard on Daisy. Last time we did a seven and we decided we we're gonna do a seven again because it's pretty hot. It doesn't really make a difference when uh, with this type of coat, whether I do a three eighths of an inch or a quarter of an inch. Um, so she just looks nicer with a with a seven. Oh, she says, "Excuse me, excuse me. I appreciate if you did not. Okay. Oh, that feels that. Oh, nope. I don't like that. Just can we just not do the brush thing? Can we just get the haircut done so we could just go home? Okay. I just want to go home." So now that we got her kind of brushed out, oh look, Jessie the trainer came to say hi. She says, I kiss your, I kiss your fingers. Welcome to the salon. Just, it costs three kisses for you to stay here. So just give me your hands and I will kiss you, kiss you, kiss you, kiss you. Cause I'm a good bye beach. So like I said earlier, we are going to do a number seven on her, but she's just, we're taking a, a visitation break. She just loves seeing everybody. She's such happy to have visitors, and I, and I think I'm explaining to to Jesse and uh, Tiffany that this is Mrs. Three Million. She says I have three million views on TikTok, and I'm I'm kind of famous on TikTok because I'm a, a famous old lady Daisy. I'm I'm famous girl. You're you're standing around famous person. I'm I mean well famous dog. You're standing with famous dog. A number seven blade is pretty short. Uh, it's almost to the skin, but it's not quite as short as a number 10 blade. In grooming, the higher the number on the blade, the shorter it is. So a number seven is shorter than a number four. A number four is 
longer than a number 10 by quite a bit actually a number four actually would look pretty nice on her normally we do a two i think i said that before which is a little it's pretty close to a number uh a number four blade a two guard comb um i'm showing jesse some of her little moles she's like i'm a holy moly she's got little moles on her which i had to be careful with the seven not to cut because the seven's teeth are very far apart so it's really easy to nick little skin tags or anything if you're not careful when using a number seven on an older dog i like to make sure and go pretty slowly just to make sure well a little, especially with her she has a lot of little moles like i said before um, so i go nice and slow to make sure that i don't catch any loose skin or skin tags or moles it looks like she's enjoying this part she, her little tail's got that slow wag she says, I'm trying to kiss you. I don't know if she's trying to keep her tongue in her mouth or if she's trying to kiss, but she does that a lot. I think it's so cute. Now it's time to go after her face again. Even though she doesn't have any teeth, she's still quite sensitive for her face. And she likes, she says, don't do it. Don't like that. Just don't go after my face. I don't like it. I'm just getting some little hairs out of her sanitary area and the inside of her legs. And then I like changing my blades quite often because they can get warm and you don't want to shave a dog with a warm blade. That's how a lot of dogs will get razor burn. You can physically burn your dog if you're not paying attention to how warm your blade is getting. So I change my blades quite often. There is a spray that you can buy called Cool Spray or Cool Lube. But I really just prefer to have multiple blades. So I have three seven blades, I have three ten blades, and I just put them face down in between shaving so that they can cool down while I'm using a fresh cool blade. Okay, now it's time for her face. I like to try and brush it out. I'm using the brush very gently because she is very sensitive around her mouth. When she was coming to me, she used to have these two front teeth that just like stuck out of her face, but those have since been removed. I think they fell out on their own. Luckily, not while I was grooming her because that would kind of freak me out. I'm like, um, your, your teeth fell out, but <laughs> they fell out at home, I think. And I'm just trying to get her little mouth combed out so that I can get a good trim on it. Any hair that I'm pulling out of her face is dead hair, so it's not hurting her. But like I said, her mouth is pretty sensitive, so she likes to try and get away from it. Always time to stop for a little love break. I, love her. I like to give her a little poke and give her a little scratch. Tell her she's doing a good job. She's a good girl. I don't know what I'm doing. Probably changing a blade. She's just standing there. I guess I could probably edit this part out. She says, I'm, I'm just standing on the table, standing on the table, waiting for the next thing to happen. Oh, hello. Yeah, so I think I was just testing to see what length I want to do on the top of her head. Usually I start with an A guard on the top of the head and then kind of work my way down. I like to do a bigger floof on the top of the head of these type of dogs. And that way I can scissor it so it's nice and round and cute. She doesn't mind this very much. She says... She says, that's all right. That feels kind of nice. Then I use my curves to shape the top of her head. She does really well for this too. Some dogs I have fall asleep when I do this. She's not one of them. But I used to groom this dog, Rudy. I think I posted a TikTok of him. And he just fully falls asleep. And she slipped out of her lead. So we just put it back on a little tighter just so she can't do that. I get her back into a position that's comfortable for her and start shaping all the little sticky outies to try and give her as round a face as I can. Sometimes when the dog's mouth is misshapen, it's a little difficult to get the shape that I want, but she's just naturally adorable, so she turns out pretty cute and her face gets kind of round. That's That was a mini heart attack and uh, she opened her mouth and her tongue kind of slipped out. And I just, oh, yes, just stay still. Just let me get all these little hairs so I can make you nice and round. Good girl, Daisy. One of the perks of doing these recordings is I can use the camera to look at her face and see any areas that I might have missed. 
and it helps me to shape the face. Looking straight on in real life, like you can kind of get a little bit blind to things that are missed, but for whatever reason, a mirror or a camera is a good way to check your work. After I finish scissoring her face and her feet, she's all done. She says, I'm beautiful. This stupid tongue won't just stay in my mouth, tongue. Can you just stay in there? Okay. I'm beautiful.